Hey guys, I'm Basamo from Stractors and in this ultimate guide you will learn all steps needed to release an NFT collection on the Solana blockchain. We will go much more into detail on how to generate your artworks and metadata, build, design and host them inside, and prepare pre-sale and reveal functionality. We also decided to publish a real project along this video. That means all the steps you see will lead to the Stractors Pixel collection which is now live and mintable by the time you're watching this. You can mint one for yourself to support us. The link is in the description. All commands from the video are also in a separate channel on our Discord server, in case you want to copy paste them. One more reason to join our server is that we are also one of the largest Metaplex and Candy Machine communities. So if you have any problems or errors following the steps in the video, feel free to ask us there. As soon as the mint is finished, we can produce even more videos, for example, how to get listed on marketplaces like Magic Eden, or how to airdrop a free collection to all holders of our NFTs. One last thing before we start, only 10% of our viewers have subscribed to our YouTube channel, so if you want to support this video, which has cost us more than 60 plus hours of work, please leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So, the first thing we need is an IDE. I personally prefer Visual Studio Code, but in the end, that's up to you. The second tool we need is Git. Obviously, we want to clone repositories because we don't want to write all the code on our own. For code reasons, we also need Node.js because mostly everything is in Node or TypeScript written. Then we use, or most projects use, Yarn as package manager, so to install everything, we need Yarn too. And for all our Solana commands, we need the Solana CLI. What in the end is important too, or makes it a lot easier, is to use the Phantom Wallet extension to manage your wallets and to see if your collectibles and your NFT tokens arrived. Furthermore, during our video we will use Metaboss. To use and install Metaboss, we will need Rust, so make sure to install this too. If we have all this installed, your environment is basically ready to go. The next thing we need then is Metaplex. Metaplex is the tool you need to put your NFTs into a candy machine, to let the people mint them, and also a possibility to generate your art. To clone this, we will copy this link here, go into, into our folder, in my case the v2 folder, and type git clone, paste the link, and we are good to go. Then this takes a few seconds, but normally not that long. and. Now we can move into the Metaplex folder, into the JS folder, and here we can type, or we have to type, yarn and start. This can take a few seconds, so we will put a cut here. Now we have Metaplex inside, and I want to take the chance to tell you a little bit about the Metaplex repository. So the repo we have here is like from high level not very interesting. You could use Metaplex 2 to host your own marketplace, but that is not something for this video. So if we want to see the interesting part for us, we have to go into JS packages and then into the CLI folder. Here in SRC, we have all the CLIs uh, we, we use for our drops. We have the Candy Machine V1, which is deprecated for now, the Candy Machine V2 CLI, as well as the Gumdrop CLI and the deprecated Fairlaunch CLI. With the Metaplex repo, you can handle lots of different stuffs, and you also have like Gumdrop and a Candy Machine UI you could possibly use. So now, enough from Metaplex. What I normally do next is generating my wallets. For that, I'm using the command Solana Keygen, then grind dash dash starts with a typo here, and then the beginning letters uh, I want to use the wallet for, um, yeah, double dot and then one. And when I now press enter, I have generated the key pair which begins with the letters SE. And now I can yeah, do a little Solana airdrop to this, true is appropriate, and then we can just type SE and uh, tap, press enter, and our seller wallet is getting too soft. What I'm now doing is uh, generating a buyer wallet too. So I'm generating the wallet and again doing the Solana airdrop too. For this time the buyer wallet, press tab, enter, and our buyer wallet has also two sides. And now 
we have both wallets in our v2 folder named as the public key and inside this json files are the private keys what i normally do next is adding the private keys to my phantom wallet to later on like have them in there so i can use them to test mint and stuff uh, but i'm doing this off camera now so yeah at this point it is now about the artwork for our mini project we wanted to do something with pixels so we made use of pixel art a cool tool with even pre-made objects but you can also use any other tool like figma or photoshop the most important thing is just to export the layers of your art as .png so we can shuffle them randomly in the following steps now. We have one folder per attribute, in our case a tractor, background, body, eyes, head, mouth and top. And in there we have our PNG files. They should be as you see here, like only the attribute you want and the rest of the picture is transparent. Now to later on generate our art, what we need is a trace configuration file. Therefore, we can use the Candy Machine v2 CLI and we have to type ts node and then the directory to this file. Then we can use the command generate configuration art generate art configurations and then the name of your traits folder. When we now press enter, this can take a few seconds. In the end, we have a file named traits-configurations.json as the basis of what we will need to generate our real pictures in the end. In this file, you can give different rarities and stuff, but I will show you this now. So, when VS Code opens the file, now, we can, and that's one for one of the reasons why I like VS Code very much. You can press right click and form a document. And now we have like a good structure. At the top, what we have is like the name we want to give. So what you should type here should be something like structures in our case, a pixel, and then put a space in there because at the end, the Metaplex tool will append a hashtag and a number. In symbol, you could put the yeah like short name of your collection, in our case SP, or Stractor's Pixel. Description could be empty. In creator, we will put our creator wallet and the shares of the royalties it will get. Then we have DNP and pre-made customs. DNP in general is like not possible combinations. So uh, what you could put in there, like for example, if you have like the lowest and the second layer, if you have uh, there a combination where they have the same color and then you don't want to, to, to let uh, Metaplex generate this combination, you could put this combination in here. In pre-made customs, you for example, could like show special combinations which you 100% want in your, in your collection. In collection, we will have the collection name and family and in breakdown, we could value like all of our rarities. So we could, for example, like yeah, say Dijon Rainbow, in this case, have a 9% rarity, Lorenz Glow a 26% rarity. In the order file, what you are saying is defining which is the lowest layer and which is the most high layer. So in which in which order you want to put the layers on top of each other. You are probably wondering why I'm not filling this file um, because I already have prepared this file for myself. So uh, what we have here is like exactly the same file you have seen before, but I have pre-populated the special, the, the, the special values and all, also the, the rarities. The only thing I have to fill in here is our seller wallet address and therefore I will just copy the public key from the, from the file name, we'll paste it here, and we are good to go. If you are unsure about the format of the different sections, for example, DNP or pre-made customs, you can move to the Metaplex repository to JS packages and then CLI. And uh, here you have a readme file where in the part 
create generative art, you have a pretty big and complete example traits file. So here you can like copy the format or anything you need, paste it in your traits configuration and yeah, then just change the little differences you need. Before moving on, I want to take the opportunity with this nice overview to tell you a little bit about Stractor's Pixel. First of all, we see the name. Obviously it's Stractor's Pixel, then a hashtag and then a number from 1 to 100. As I recognize now, the hashtag is probably not appended by Metaplex, so yeah, in the name you have to add the hashtag. Then we have symbol. Symbol in our case is SP, which also stands for Stractor's Pixel. Um, in our case we skip description and then we have creators with our public key and a share of 100%. Um, we, for, for, for us, for our collection, don't use DMP in pre-made customs, so we let it completely randomized. Um, collection, uh, in collection we have name and family. Name of the collection is Stractors Pixel, the family of the collection is uh, Stractors in general. Then we come to breakdown and order. In breakdown, we have like listed down our, our attributes with their rarities, and in order, we have the order in which the layers are on top of each other. Um, so the order of the breakdown section is not important. What is important is this down here. In our case, the lowest level is background. There we, for example, have Stractor's Castle, Stractor's Craft, and uh, Super Stractor's Museum with rarities of 20, 45, and 35%. This schema is the same for all of your attributes, so in our case also for attractor, background, head, eyes and top. Maybe one additional thing to, to the breakdown section, if you want to have one attribute or one layer, which is on every NFT, um, you could do it like we have done it with uh, our david.png. Uh, here we have like body and only one PNG with a, share, with a rarity of 100%. So um, yeah, David the buddy will be on every of our NFTs and then attributes are applied to him. Actually our artwork is in uh, 200 by 200 pixels, but because that is too small and as soon as you open or enlarge the picture in Arweave or Phantom Wallet, it loses um, yeah, somehow some kind of sharpness. Therefore we have increased the size proportionally so that um, we will use more storage volume, but on the other hand, on the other hand, like the product we will sell have a, have a better quality. So now we can start generating or shuffling our artworks. Therefore, the first thing we have to make sure is to rename our Stractor's Pixel Trades configuration to Trades configuration. And then we can directly start to generate our command. Therefore, we will use the Candy Machine V2 CLI again and the create underscore generative underscore art command and then the first attribute we use is a dash c for configuration where our trades configuration will be the second attribute we will use is dash n with uh, the number of artworks we want to generate so 100 and then we have ta this this attribute is basically to achieve that the .png, which is in our config file, is not appended to the, to the attribute names, so that we just have, for example, background and not background.png. And when we now press enter, Metaplex will generate our artworks. Metaplex has generated our assets folder. In here, we can find 100 JSON and 100 PNG files. The PNG files are our artworks, and the JSON files are our metadata JSON files. So in here, we can find first of all name. The name of this NFT is Stractor's Pixel hashtag 1, so Stractor's Pixel hashtag from our trades configuration, and the one from Metaplex. Then we have symbol, which is SP, and then we have image. Some of you may have the question on mind why I'm not using hash flips, and Image and Yuri are the exact reasons for this. Because Hashlabs is not updated since the last three months and so it's not optimized for Candy Machine V2. When you use Hashlabs in these two places, probably image.png is written. And that's not working with Candy Machine V2. That's one of the reasons why I use Metaplex CLI to generate my artworks. Then we have Type, which is image slash png. Category, creator, as before, trades, con uh, trades configuration, 
then the description is empty, and then we have Salafi basis points. Salafi basis points is the percentage of royalties you get. So we are not taking 500% royalties, 500 stands for 5%. So 500 points are 5% royalties. Then we have our attributes, Happy Sweater, David, Normal Eyes, Rosla White, Stractor's Craft, Normal Mouth and No Head. And in the end we have our collection, name and family. So now let's have a look at the artwork. And as we can see, everything is generated normally. Looks fine, we have one beautiful Stractor's Pixel. And yeah, with this, the generation of the artworks is finished. And we can now move on to the candy machine, whitelist, pre-sale and more functionality steps. To make a pre-sale or whitelist draw possible in candy machine v2, we have to generate and distribute SPL tokens. You can imagine them as some kind of concert tickets, which are mandatory to enter the show. And in this case, it's the ticket to mint your project before everyone else. To realize this functionality, we begin with generating our SPL token. For this purpose, the first important step is to set our seller key pair in our Solana config as key pair path. So we are typing Solana config set, then k, and then our seller wallet. And now on the one hand we can see that we are indefinite, which is perfectly fine. And then we can see our key pair path is pointing to our seller wallet. Now, what I always do is generating a new vanity key pair, which we are using to generate our SPL tokens. So I'm typing Solana key again, grind dash dash starts with then TDO for token, the one, press enter, and we have generated a completely fresh vanity key pair. Now I'm typing SPL token, create token dash n of dash k t o as tab and then I put a decimals zero at the end to make sure that one token equals one token and not 0 0.00001 token. So yeah that's to ensure to have a clear number as one token set. When I now press enter as we can see, our tokens are generated. The next important step is to create an account. So I'm typing SPL token, create the account, and then our token public key, and press enter. As we can now see, our token account is generated too. So I'm now doing SPL token mint 100. And forgot the token address, <laughs> my bad, mint, uh, then to, and then uh, 100. And now he's minting 100 tokens into our token account. To make sure everything worked fine, I'm typing SPL token account. Pressing enter and I see the balance of my token account is 100. So I have 100 whitelist token uh, to distribute. After generating the SPL tokens, the next important step is to distribute them. For this purpose, we will use Gumdrop. If you want to see any documentation on this topic, you can just go to docs.metaplex.com because it's part of the Metaplex repository. And there under airdrops and Gumdrop, you have uh, the Gumdrop documentation. Here, everything is written, what I'm doing in the next steps, but at all, I'm showing you the basics. So to start with Gumdrop, what I'm usually doing is, uh, yeah, first of all, of, of course, like using TS node, then pointing to the CLI SRC folder, and then instead of using Candy Machine V2 CLI, we are using Gumdrop CLI. And then we have the create command, which is for creating a Gumdrop. And yeah, before, like just typing all the attributes down, I usually do a dash dash help to get an overview of which attributes we have. So, and now I can step by step explain them to you. So, first of all, we have a dash E, which stands for environment, which is when you are on definite, definite, and when you are on mainnet, it's mainnet, obviously. Then we have dash key pair, which is in our case, the seller key pair. 
And then we have um, yeah, dash r and dash l, um, dash r is RPC URL, which is necessary when you want to achieve something on mainnet, but on devnet it's totally fine to ignore it. And then you have dash log level, which is obsolete for us now. Dash dash claim integration is necessary for us because um, yeah, we need to clarify which 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 claim integration we are using, and in our purpose, we are using uh, or doing a transfer, like from our wallet to another wallet. And um, yeah, so claim integration will be transferred. Then we have dash dash transfer mint. This is the public key of the mint as it written there. And um, yeah, to be clear, it's our token public key. Then we have dash dash candy config and dash dash candy UUID. As you can see, you can use Gumdrop 2 to let them mint, or let the users mint the SPL tokens from a candy machine. We won't do this at the moment, so we don't need these two attributes. Then we have um, dash dash addition mint, which is also obsolete for us in the moment. But what is interesting is dash dash distribution method. So there we can clarify how we want to yeah, send our whitelist members the links to get their SPL token. There are several ways, as RVS email, RVS SMS, a Discord with a Discord bot. What uh, we, we will do now is uh, using wallets. There we get a big JSON file where everyone can search for their public key um, and use a, use a simple link, which only works for them. Yeah, then we have RVS uh, access and RVS secret, secret access, um, which is for the RVS email and RVS SMS functionalities. And dash dash discord token obviously is for the discord distribution method. OTP auth is also not used by us uh, at the moment. It's normally used for, for the RBS functionalities. And then we have this dash dash distribution list, which is something we will create in a few minutes. Um, and then at the end you put the path. And then yeah, we have some other things like reset only and uh, host and help, which are also not necessary for us at the moment. As mentioned before, what we now have to do is generating our distribution list. For this purpose, we are just generating a new text file. Name it thislist.json. Press enter. And then open it in Visual Studio Code. In the meantime, we are moving to the Gumdrop documentation and another part whitelist. We can see the template for the distribution list. So we are copying this, going to our this list and deleting the first parts. We will only have our buyer as whitelist member. Edition is also not relevant for us. What is relevant for us is the distribution method specific handle, which is uh, at the buyer wallet. And then we have the gumdrop claim allowance, so how many tokens can yeah, this, this, this member mint. So therefore, what we need is the public key of our buyer wallet, which I have here. So we can paste this into this place here, and then we can give it an amount, a one or maybe a two, to give him two SPL tokens. So that this is achieved now, what we can now do is generating our create command. So therefore, we will begin with the dash key, which is our seller key pair. Then the next thing we have is claim, claim integration, where we will use the transfer as mentioned before. Then we have dash dash transfer mint, which is our token wallet public or uh, public key and not the .json file so remove this .json then uh, we have our distribution distribution method method which is in our case wallets and then we have this distribution list where we put the name for our distribution list, this list.json. And when we now hit enter, Gumdrop is creating our log files and our actual Gumdrop. So as we can see, everything works fine. 
is generating and then showing us some data, which is perfectly fine. And now it's writing the responses in our .log folder. And now it's finished. So what we can do now is we can move into our .log folder, devnet, the name here. And here we have some uh, devnet files. And one of them is URLs, which is the important one for us now. Because here we find the list we could now like post anywhere where every whitelist member with his public keys listed and get a specific URL. So this URL is online and only works for the whitelist member specified in the URL and in the wallets list. And now we can see this site where we can now mint the SPL token. So I will log in now and go to my IR wallet. Perfect, and we're connected to Gumdrop. So as you can see, I'm connected with DevNet with the correct wallet, which is also shown here in the handle. And now I can claim my Gumdrop and with one click, we'll get my two SPL tokens. As you can see, claim succeed, one of two, two of two. And now I have minted my first SPL token from Gumdrop. Um, you can see them here in the unknown token area. We can see, okay, I have two, two SPL tokens of this kind. There's one last thing I would like to mention. The shown way of distributing SPL tokens via Gumdrop is the easiest way. But there are definitely clean opportunities, but those need more effort and experience in programming. For example, the SPL token can be sent to the individual wallets via a Python script. This would make it easier for the community to receive the tokens and they would not have to pay for it themselves. Instead, you are paying the fees for them. But also, this leads to a little bit more of a risk that you mess something up. So be careful with doing it like this. With the steps, we have generated and distributed our SPL tokens with Gumdrop. And we are ready to go to generate our candy machine. The first thing we have to do to realize our candy machine is setting up the config of JSON. For this purpose, Metaplex docs and Candy Machine v2 and configuration has a very, very nice documentation on this topic. Here, every field is described and we have some yeah, basis, basic use cases like uh, capture settings, hidden settings, and for example, whitelist settings, which we can copy and paste and just fill in the things we need as customizations. As you know me, I already have prepared a config.json file, which begins with price. As strict as pixel should be just a possibility for you to support us a little bit, we have set the price to 0.1, so 0.1 sort. This is a yeah, definite test, so the number of NFTs is five, so I have the possibility to mint all NFTs to later on do something like a reveal drop or something. Then we have gatekeeper, which is the section where you yeah, enable capture settings. So here we have in the Metaplex docs a part named capture settings and where we yeah, just can copy uh, the, the settings here and put it into the correct line. And now when we set the comma to the right spot, we have enabled the basic civic pass capture functionality. Install treasury account we put the yeah, seller account, so the, the, the account where we want like the mint, uh, the mint price to, to, to land in the end. So for this purpose, I will copy the public key and yeah, paste it here and we are fine. SPL token account and SPL token are the two parts of the config file. And as I mentioned before, you can do a gumdrop SPL token mint um, with a candy machine. And that's the place where you put the SPL token account. So the account where the SPL tokens should go. And the SPL token, so the, the our TO key pair uh, in when you want to do like a gumdrop um, candy machine mint, SPL token mint. Then we have the go live date. Here we will put a date, which is in the future, into because we first want to test the whitelist functionality or simulate the whitelist functionality. So yeah, that's the first setting we will need. Then we have 
end settings, uh, which yeah are not uh, not relevant for us now. But if you are interested in end settings, you can just have a look in the documentation I showed before. And then we have whitelist min settings. So for whitelist min settings, we have uh, some use cases listed down here. The use case uh, which is which is relevant for us is the whitelist min setting, the the first one. So. Here we have as mount burn every time. So when you like use a token for mint, the token is burned afterwards. And for example, when you have two tokens, after the first mint you only have one token, after the second mint you have zero token. In mint, we put the vanity key pair which we use to create the SPL tokens. In uh, pre sale we put true because this is before the go live date. And uh, we want to yeah, use it as a pre-sale so that only uh, members with a token can mint before the go live date. And then we have the go live date and uh, then everybody can mint and that's public mint. And we don't want uh, yeah, to use a discounted price. Uh, to do this, we can could just like put a um, discounted price in here, like for example, 0.05 sol and uh, then we were fine. But for the moment, we don't need that, so what we will paste here is exactly this. And again, place the comma, and we are fine. What we now have to change is obviously our token. And for this purpose, we will copy it out of our explorer and paste it here, and we are good to go. So. For DevNet, we could yeah, leave Arweave here. For Mainnet, as you will see later, we will do Arweave so, because Arweave will in the future be deprecated. Furthermore, we have IPFS, IPFS uh, and RVS S3 bucket, which we don't need for the moment. No retain authority is in most cases also not relevant for you. Uh, just let it, uh, let it, let it like uh, set to false. No, no mutable. Set to false too, because uh, if you set it to true, you are not able to later on change uh, the metadata, like to update metadata. If you set this to true, it's not possible anymore. So you also cannot change uh, like the authority or the creator or anything. So yeah, I would recommend uh, clearly let this uh, be to false, um, but it's up to you. And if you are unsure about any of these files in here, then have a look at the Metaplex docs. There, every every single attribute is explained complete, and yeah, so we are fine like this. If we just want to do a normal mint, that's completely fine, or a normal whitelist mint. Um, but now we want to do reveal settings, um, so like a reveal functionality. For this purpose, we use hidden settings. So if you don't want to do a reveal functionality, you can now skip this part and stay with your config JSON like this, and then yeah, continue with the afterwards part. If you want to do reveal functionality or understand hidden settings, then continue with the steps I do now. There are different ways to achieve uh, some kind of reveal functionality, and we tested many of them. Most of them require basic coding skills, and uh, you have like a high risk to mess the reveal com process completely up and to destroy your whole collection. So we would not recommend, for example, to use Metaboss and then get the hash list and then yeah, write a script to, to match um, yeah, hash list and, or hashes to metadata. That's something we won't recommend. So we were like looking for several days for something easy or an easy workaround to achieve it until Metaplex um, yeah, have a better way to achieve review drops. So what I'm showing you now is uh, yeah, Extractor's improved workaround for this whole thing. What we will first do is fill hidden settings. Hidden settings or the purpose of hidden settings is to upload a candy machine where the metadata is the same for all of them. So you could use it, for example, as described in the, in the docs for very large drops. Uh, because you don't upload all the assets in the same moment you are creating the candy machine and the dot cache file. In our purpose, we will just use it to generate a dot cache file to upload our assets to Arweave 
without putting them on chain. So that's the purpose we will use them, because in the end we have a .cache file with the R weaflings, but the R weaflings are not on chain. Instead, we have a static R weafling that is on chain for all NFTs. To achieve this, we will um, again have a look at the yeah, Metaplex docs, and here we have hidden settings like a, a, a basic a basic section which we can paste into our hidden settings department here. Here it is. So the comma again. What we put in here is we are giving a name and this time we don't need the hashtag because now the hashtag is appended automatically, not as before. Then we put one URI, which is the same for all NFTs, and this URI is not the URI to the picture, it's the URI to the metadata which holds the picture. So if you are not prepared like us, that we have uh, on DevNet at least uh, many uh, weave links which are working, what I would recommend to yeah, get this URI is to upload the Kenny machine, um, when you are testing on DevNet or DevNet, when you are doing it on Mainnet, then obviously on Mainnet, with one asset, then getting the, the Rweave link, and in the end, just withdrawing the candy machine. So then you have a working Rweave link, which is perfectly fine, and that's it. Then we have hash. The purpose of hash is not connected to real functionality. This field is more of a possibility to prove that you are not manip manipulating the .cache file. So the way to handle this is if you have the correct .cache file, which you will use later for the, for the, after the update of the metadata. Before updating it, you can copy this .cache file, put it in a SHA-256 decoder, and then the result you can put into this hash field. So later on, your buyers or holders, which will get the updated values, can see or check if you used exactly this .cache file and you was not manipulating, like for example, Stractor's pixel hashtag 7 would normally have the best picture, which you can see in the .cache file, but after update, uh, Stractor's pixel hashtag 7 is just some trashy, unrare, unrare picture. So that the members or the holders have the ability to check if he was using like the correct .cache file before you really updated it. This field is the possibility for this. If this makes 100% sense, I'm not sure, but that's the way I understood this field. So what we are now doing is yeah, finding an, an URI. Um, I already have a, a URI of one of our further tests of the real straight test drop. Um, so this points to a Lorenz Glow. And what I will do is use uh, the this link, like the Rweave link of this, and use this as the single URI. Uh, URI. So I have already copied it here. Ah, that's the PNG link, sorry, my bad, um, I have copied it here, and now we can save our config file. Now, and that's necessary for all people who skip the reveal functionality part 2, we want to get started uploading our candy machine. For this purpose, because we have choose the number 5 for the DevNet drop, we will first have to make sure that also only five uh, pictures or artworks with metadata are in our assets folder. For this purpose, I will now mm, yeah, cut out uh, 95 of, of my assets and put them in a new folder named Craig. Oh, now I will move them into here. What I have to make sure too is that this folder is not in the assets folder because the uh, verify assets command have some problems with that so make sure that only the metadata and the pictures are in this folder and you are good to go and now we can we can um, 
verify our assets with GS node, can you machine v2 CLI verify assets and then the assets folder and when we hit enter now we should our metaplex should verify if our metadata is cor correctly formatted and the upload would work when we would do it now so for devnet it's not that important because you don't waste money but for a main drop that's very important to make sure okay looks fine so we can now start with the upload command so we will type again ts node can you machine v2 cli then upload then k for key pair put in our seller, vo seller wallet then we will have dash cp for configuration path and put config.json in there and in the end we will put the directory to our assets folder in the command and when we now hit enter everything should be uploaded fine so we will have five nfts in our candy machine with all the same metadata and at the same moment our real assets are uploaded and now we see the warning our wave storage option will be going away soon that's why we need or uh, we use our wave soil for main drops but for definite drops that's only a warning so we are totally fine and yeah, i will skip this upload process because it can take some seconds now as you can see the upload has finished what we will do next is verifying that our upload went correctly so therefore and that's not necessary for hidden settings because the command will fail at all but for normal drops this is very important we type ts node can machine v2 cli verify upload and then dash key with our seller key pair and when you normally now press enter, the candy machine or Metaplex is verifying that all uploads run correctly. When we use hidden settings, all of our tokens are not on-chain, so the result will always be not all NFTs are checked out. But that's completely normal when we use hidden settings. If not, please do this verify upload command to make sure everything went well. And the second verify command we can do when this command is finishing here is verify price to make sure that the price is also set correctly i will now cut this process here nice and um, the second command we can do is verify price as mentioned before to verify we have also set the price to the right amount and therefore we will write a candy machine to cli verify price our key pair and then dash p and the price we expect it would be so in our case 0 0.1 if we now press enter metaplex is verifying if this is true and you will get a response or an error message if something went wrong in our case good to go candy machine price is set correctly so we are fine now maybe as mentioned before what is interesting now is uh, the hash thing so to make sure that or to prove to your members or to your holders that you have done everything as expected what you can now do is moving to your .cache file where the actual artworks are, are shown and here you can just copy this and paste this in a SHA-256 decoder so um, now I will go to SHA decoder or decrypter and here I will now edit encrypt and here we have a pretty good hash and when I now move back to config file I will use this hash this place save this and we'll update the candy machine again so i will again do the verify mm, place update underscore candy underscore machine command then dash k or seller key pair and dash cp or config.json and then press enter so we have the hashed version of our config file in uh, of our cache file in our config file to later on show your buyers that 
here that's that's the hash you have in your metadata and uh, that's the the config file so hash it yourself and check if the values are the same and you are not scanned so that's to this topic so maybe before this command is finished and it's running very long what we will do next is um yeah doing a small a small um a small turn to the versatile hosting topic because in this in this order it's easier to later on and um, do your front-end adjustment and bring your front end to the start so that's the next part we will, we will handle first step you need to do to get started with versal is to create a versal account if you have so then you will land on this page and you can simply click on your project Normally you have to connect with your GitHub account. Um, if you have already done this, you can click on import third party Git repository. And now we come to an interesting part because for the UI, we have several possibilities. What we will use is uh, the Kane Machine V2 responsive UI of our team member Bloodspill. Um, this UI has lots of benefits, especially regarding whitelist and completely fits our needs. But you could also uh, use, for example, the Kenny Machine V2 Boilerman site of uh, Tony Boyle. And this one is pretty, pretty good too. And you could also use the Kenny Machine UI from Metaplex. But uh, for our purposes and the way we want to handle whitelist, um, the Kenny Machine UI doesn't fit well. And uh, then we decided to use the repository of our team member. So what we now want to do is uh, copy this link into the URL git repository part here and uh, now we continue in the project uh, in the project creation process and what we now are doing is forking this git repository we pasted there into our own space I will now give it a name um, it will probably be Stractor's pixel UI and we'll click on create now i will create a private git repository where i can work and push my work and from there the react.js site is deployed later on onto my domain so this deployment process will take some seconds so yeah i will cut this when we finish deployment we will end on this page and some confetti is thrown and what we can now do uh, is click go to dashboard where we have the dashboard of our in my case tractors pixel ui um, project and now I can move to the git repository which is created um, and now I can clone it what we will do in some steps before I want to show you uh, something something different and here you see uh, our project is already deployed on some test server and um, stractors pixel UI dot app you see basically the min page here, but we don't have a valid candy machine UI in our .end file, so just nothing is shown. So to continue with, with Versal and with uh, our front end site, we first have to start editing something. To achieve this is cloning our newly created GitHub repository into our v2 folder. For this, I use the SSH link because I should be connected with the SSH key, hopefully, and you see everything worked fine. If you don't have these SSH uh, things, you can just uh, paste the HTTPS link, then a pop-up window will come up where you can log into your GitHub account. That's a possibility too if you don't like to use SSH keys because sometimes it's a little bit complicated. So now we have the repository um, cloned and we see it exactly here so the first step we should do as usual when we install uh, when we clone a new repository is first yeah, install install it so i will move into the stricters pixel folder and we'll do the yarn install command yeah as usual this can take a few seconds so now the installation is finished the first thing we'll do with the ui is grabbing our candy machine ID from the cache file which we have here clicking this one and moving back to our repository and generating the .end file because the first thing I always want to do is uh, do a simple yarn start to ensure everything is working well this one 
the stream perfect like we are on DevNet, so now I will save this and then rename the fire to only end. So what we have now is like a finished setup, this I don't need for the basics any other editings. So we can now do yeah start this takes some seconds and then we should see uh, the basic mint site with the design from Bloodspur. Um, yeah, and uh, then we are probably good to go. We could uh, test on this stage, um, but before before testing, the first thing um, I will do is like have a little look and then start editing the design aspects a little bit to our purposes um, because this will be also the mint side we will use for strictest pixel at the end. So I will show you how to do some minor adjustments on the design so that yeah, in the end you have your own mint page. So let's see how far we come here. It's starting the development server. And now, as you can see, the site is loaded, compiled successfully, everything worked fine. So we could now connect our wallet and start the minting process but before doing this obviously this is not our design so this has nothing to do with uh, Stractor's pixel so what we will do in the next steps is to adjust uh, the design a little bit to our purposes so that we have our artworks here our little design on above here and maybe yeah, delete some unnecessary buttons fill some text um, so yeah this will be the next steps there are two topics regarding design which you can change in this UI. The color theme and the content. For this, there are two files which you need to change the two topics. The first one is app.css. There you have the values to change the background color, the card color or the font color. And then we have home.tsx where you can put the content in you want. So I would say let's get started and let's just start editing the theme. For this I've prepared a few color values which fits best to our collection. So there we have a nice yellow tone for the background and a little bit less yellow tone for the cards. And when we now hit control save we can see the changes are directly affected. So one more thing is not perfect in my mind and that's the green of the title. So I will set this to white, hit Ctrl S again and now the titles are white. So from general color design this is enough for me now. What I will do now is changing the content. For this I'm going into the home TSX file and I'm searching for the basic HTML code. So here's lots of functionality implemented and here after the return statement we have our basic html code so let's start from the beginning first we have logo that's the logo on the top left here and i already have prepared a logo and a gif for later on i have placed this in the public folder here we have the sp logo and the sp gif and when i now type in sp logo instead of logo png we should see that the logo on top here is directly changed. The next thing I want to adjust is the my NFT header here. Because we are Stractor's pixel, we won't place my NFT here. Instead, we will write Stractor's pixel and hit Control S. And now, since we changed the header, it's important to change the GIF too. So as before, I just put the name of my GIF file in here and the change is affected directly. What I now want to make sure is that we have some fitting texts down here, but this is a very easy process because it's just copy pasting. So I will skip this process and you will see the result in the end. Now I have populated our text boxes with some nice text about Stractor's Pixel, why does Stractor's Pixel exist, and our social links. So two things are annoying me. The first thing is that the a tag href links, which I have placed here, are looking like basic Wikipedia links from 2005. Um, so I just want to give them a different color. I don't want them to look like a look, look like a link, uh, but I want to, them to remain clickable. So 
what I'm doing is I'm, I'm pasting a small CSS tag for for A with the color white and text decoration decoration none. And when I now hit Control Save, we can see the links are still clickable, but more of look like normal text. The second thing that is annoying me are obviously the logos of Cool Cats here. So as before, I'm replacing the logo in logo aligner here with uh, my SP, not SPL logo, <laughs> with SP logo, hitting the Control Save button. And now we should be fine. So here I deleted the L, that's why this logo was removed. So now everything is perfect and for me the design is finished. Um, you can adjust a lot of more things, but for that you need basic HTML and CSS skills, then you can do everything you want with this UI. Um, for our project, for this video, I think that's enough. Maybe in addition to saying, if you already have like an index HTML template, like a main landing page for your project, before you completely integrate another UI, Tony Boyd's UI or Bloodsbill's UI into your site, which can be very difficult and you can mess a lot of stuff up, you need basic programming knowledge, front-end development knowledge. Um, before you do this, Maybe as a suggestion, what you can do too is like using your index HTML or maybe just creating a WordPress page for the basic design and host the mint site of another repository on a subdomain of yours. So you have like a landing page for your project and then you have a basic mint site just for the mint functionality. What we now want to achieve is pushing our design changes to our Versa test domain. So to do this, the GitHub and Versa have a connection. So if I'm pushing anything on my main, main branch, Versa is automatically deploying the changes to our production site. So to do this, what I can do, because I'm only one developer, is just pushing directly to the, to the main branch. If you are working with more than one developers, then you should have some kind of branching system. So with feature branches and then pull requests to the main branch to make sure you are not messing your whole site up. But in my case, what I'm now doing is just typing git add dot to add my new files, then git commit dash m and fe adjustments as message. And then I can type git push to push my changes to the main branch. And we are now done. So what you can see here now is our FE adjustments deployment is uh, building. Um, as you can see, I tested I tested it before, so there is already an FE adjustments um, branch deployed currently. Um, yeah, but don't mind about that. So now it is deploying automatically to our Versa app domain. As probably many of you, I don't want to host my site at the .versa.app domain. So for this purpose, I went to Namecheap and bought my own stractors-pixel.r domain. To now make sure that we can host our Versa site on this domain, I'm copying the name of my site, pasting it in the view domains part without the white space, and I'm clicking on it. I have three different choices. The first one is the best one because it's redirecting stractors-pixel.r to www.stractors. Um, so I'm clicking now add and now I see in very configuration. Because I bought my domain at name cheap and not at Versa, I first have to make sure that the correct name servers and the custom DNS of Namecheap are chosen. So I'm now pasting the two name servers of Versa in here, checking the changes and now it is changing. This can take some seconds as you can read here the update may take up to 48 hours normally after some minutes the changes are affected and we will see here that our configuration is is working for now it will take some minutes so i will do a cut here as you can see now our name servers are updated and our domain is live if we now click on our link we will come to the mint site and you will see that there's one common issue the mint site is completely empty if you don't adjust the correct spots in your GitHub repository, the problem is that the .n file is ignored. So when you want to change this behavior, you have to move to your .git ignore. 
this can take a few seconds. And then, when Visual Studio Code is loading, we have to remove the .env in the git ignore file, because this means git ignores every .env file. And because we want to have our candy machine live later on, we have to remove this from the git ignore, save, and then just git add god, git commit dash m, and git ignore adjustments, enter and push this commit to our master branch and then we should good should be good to go as we can see now on our overview it is yeah building the git ignore adjustments commit and we will see how our deployment is now complete and if we now move to our domain we see the mint side as expected let's connect our wallet now and if you remember correctly we are now in the whitelist mint so in the preset process that's why we see that you have two whitelist mints remaining because we have two whitelist tokens in our wallet and if i now click on mint because i before off camera off camera i have done the uh, capture process we skip this capture for the moment but you can see how this is going with the second whitelist mint so I now click on Approve. Now we have minted our first whitelist NFT. And when we click on Phantom Wallet, which is a little bit laggy for the moment, then we can see our extractors with the hidden settings. So our reveal, before reveal um, NFT. Now we see um, I have one whitelist mint remaining. Um, so I will do this too, and now you see the capture functionality. Um, now I'm looking for a plane, 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 plane. And when I click on continue now, the civic pass is requesting the on-chain capture functionality. And now capture is complete. I can now prove my second mint. And now I have minted my functionalities. As you remember, I set the date in the future, so if you don't have any whitelist tokens, what you see is just uh, a countdown. And um, now we have two of our unrevealed NFTs in our wallet. So, basically that's the whitelist functionality. And the next step we have to do is doing our public sale. To do the public mint, normally we would just wait until the countdown is outdated and the go live date appears, so the public mint start, starts. But um, to make this a little bit faster, what we will now do is update our config JSON go live date uh, to the past, so that the yeah that the mint uh, mint date or the go live date is yesterday, so the public mint already has started. So I'm saving the 22nd January, so yesterday here um, and we we'll now update the candy machine to do this I will take the TS node candy machine b2cli and then the update underscore candy underscore machine with a dash key pair and our seller key pair and dash configuration path config.json if we now hit enter, this can take a few seconds, but with a cut, this is incredibly fast. <laughs> so, if we now reload our mint page, connect our wallets, then we can see the whitelist mint is over, so the countdown is outdated, and we have now the functionality of a public mint. So, if we now click on mint, you will have the normal capture logic, and choose some motor bicycles, many of them here and now we have done the capture we can continue approve the capture transaction now it is verifying and it started the mint without whitelist token or anything and now if we see the confetti great we have minted our first public mint before reveal nft 
So I will now mint the remaining two NFTs and we'll put a small cut for this process. Now our collection is sold out. As you can see, our buyer wallet is minted all five of our DevNet NFTs and has paid 0.1 sol for each of the NFTs to our seller wallet. The next important step we have to do now is signing our NFTs. Let me explain you what is meant by signing your NFTs. It's basically something to verify the creator. If you don't sign your NFTs, then someone else could steal all your images and create their own candy machine with it. And people wouldn't know which one is from the real creator. Some marketplaces even do not accept your project if you don't sign them. So watch out for the next steps for one stone if you wish to sign your NFTs, which is highly recommended by us. First of all, to sign our NFTs, we have to install Metaboss. Metaboss is a pretty nice GitHub repository with lots of functionality. Over the link down here, you can get an overview in the docs about all the functionalities Metaboss brings with it. But first of all, let's install and clone Metaboss into our folder. Therefore, I have to open CMD, move to our v2 folder and type git clone and paste the link of Metaboss, press enter and it is cloning into our folder. Then we can move into the Metaboss repository and type cargo install Metaboss. That's the way we install this tool and yeah. As mentioned in the beginning, make sure to have Rust installed. Without Rust, this is not working. So um, yeah, I will cut this part. Metaboss is successfully installed now. To make sure this is true, I just type Metaboss and I see I have Metaboss version 0.3.4. Before actually signing my NFTs, I want to show you what the before state is. So now I'm opening one of our extractors, soil scan, and as we can see here, our creator, the candy machine creator is verified, but our actual uh, key pair, our seller key pair is unverified. To verify this, we do the sign all so what we are doing now is we are typing metaboss sign all then dash k and put our seller key pair in here then dash c dash c stands for candy machine id to get this we move back to our definite.json and copy our candy machine candy machine id from here and paste it into our command and in the end very important we put a dash dash V2. And when we now press enter, Metaboss is signing all our assets with our seller key pair, which is one of our creators as well. So now let's take a few seconds and now we have this data. Don't panic and when we now reload it, there will probably, this will probably be, probably be uh, unverified. Just take a few seconds until SolScan has correctly set this to verified so we will now just refresh a few times and after some seconds we see our key pair is now verified and everything is fine so this signing step is very very important to ensure that your nfts can't be faked and said anywhere else so when you now have both set to verified and both key pairs are have signed then you are good to go our collection is now minted and our collection is signed. But as you can see, we are still in the before reveal state. So what we will do now is revealing our NFTs. Therefore, we will need to prepare two dot cache files. The one we have here, which shows us basically the state we want after the reveal. So here we have like the correct weave links of the of the real artworks for later with the status on chain faults which is not relevant for the functionality we will use so we can now check if the weave links represent the real artworks with pasting the link in chrome and checking if the image URE is the correct one looks fine and now we are copying our dot cache file because we now will prepare one uh, after reveal JSON and 
and before reveal JSON. Like that. Our after reveal JSON is basically the JSON we get out of our candy machine. Because here, the JSON file holds the rweave links we want to give after the reveal. So what we will do in the before reveal is replicating the current the current state of our candy machine actual actually. So we will need to copy the rweave link which is holded by every single NFT and we'll replace the links with this link because that are the actual links they, they are holding currently. Because when you have like many, many different different um, links in here, it's it could be pretty difficult to to replace them by hand. I have prepared a regex which uh, which I will I will give to you afterwards or in the description and uh, which you can use to replace your links. As you can see, it's a simple form which just searches for links in this thing and marks them so that now we can replace them with the actual album link. So if I now click here the replace all button, our before review JSON is ready. And our after review JSON stays like this. To enable that the command later on, we'll find our JSON files. We have to put a devnet dash before the actual name. Just um, the syntax is like this. Uh, that the environment uh, and the dash is before our dot cache JSON. So now a small storyteller to what we are using now. Um, so Metaplex has a functionality or a command which is named update existing NFTs from latest cache file. For any reason with uh, Kenny Machine V2 this was not working properly. So Helaprix was uh, doing some, some fixes and have, uh, has started a pull request uh, where, where I find these changes and I tested them and they worked fine but not for hidden settings. So what I've done is um, yeah, forking this repository into my own repository, the link will also be in the description, and I did some minor adjustments to, um, yeah, to, to fix the command for hidden settings too. So what you can now find on the branch patch one is fix update existing NFTs with latest cache file. It's pretty funny, I don't know why exactly, but for any reason I have an error with my SSH key that there is written a different name. So if anybody knows why, then <laughs> write me a message at Discord. Um, but yeah, don't mind about that. Um, so what we will now use just for this single command is uh, the repo um, on Metaplex or the Metaplex repo on, on, in, my, in my space. To do this, we first have to clone the repository. And there uh, I can say uh, that it's not possible to clone it in the same repository as the original Metaplex, um, Metaplex repo. So what you have to do is uh, create a new folder, I named it update, and then just uh, yeah, type as usual git clone and then put the HTTPS or SSH link in there, clone the repository, I now already have cloned it. So um, then you have to uh, check out, so with git checkout, uh, maybe first move into the Metaplex folder and then git checkout patch one, I know already on patch one, so uh, don't mind about that. And then if you just uh, installed it, make sure to uh, type cdjs or so move in the js folder and then type yarn install. But for my environment, everything is set up uh, fine. So what we will do now is um, yeah, generating our command. Therefore, as usual, we will use the uh, TSJS uh, Candy Machine V2 CLI. Um, but I'm in the wrong folder, so I will move back to V2 and then paste this again. And now we are using the Metaplex file from the update folder. So I will add an update here. And yeah, now we can paste in the command, it's pretty long, so make sure to copy it anywhere or use the help command and updating existing NFTs from latest cache file. And then we will start with a dash dash help. Um, I normally like it to start with a dash dash help to get an overview what attributes we have to make sure I don't miss something. Um, 
Yeah, so let's see what we got. And now we can see that um, yeah, the command starts with the dash n. We are on definite, that's default, so we are completely fine. And then the first important thing is dash k for key pair. We will put our seller key pair here. And then the next thing we need is dash c for dash cash name. And uh, here we put uh, the name we want without the definite dash, so before reveal. And then we have an attribute named new cache, um, where we put after reveal into it. So if I now hit enter, everything should work fine. Like just to make sure, here we have our strictness pixel 3 NFT with the old picture. And now let's see if it is working. What the tool is now doing is like iterating through your two JSON files. Um, yeah, compare them to each other and check, okay, where we have a difference between uh, the two URIs and uh, he will update all uh, the whole cache file from top to bottom um, where we have differences between the URIs. So, so um, if there's a difference, he will uh, change the URI from the before reveal to the URI of the after reveal. And now we can see finished signing metadata for five NFTs. So the process is not completely ended, but I think when we reload this page here, we can see that we have our Stractor's pixel hashtag three revealed here. And when we now click on our wallet and are having a look at all our NFTs, then we see everything work perfectly. Our NFTs are revealed and we have the hashtag one, two, three, or and the strike does pixel five as expected. So yeah, we now have an NFT collection, which is revealed, which is signed, which is minted and everything is perfect. This means the definite part of the video is finished and we can now move on to the main part. Because the majority of steps are exactly or nearly the same and many of the features we showed before like pre-sale and reveal doesn't fit to the way we will drop our collection, we will show you in the following minutes just how to use a custom RPC, set up your public sale, upload your candy machine and adjust versus so that you guys can mint our Stractor's Pixel. Some functionalities are not even possible at the moment like signing and magic emailing. So subscribe to our channel, mint our collection, because when everything works out well, we will do additional videos about the further steps of Stractor's Pixel. To get started with our main part, the first thing you have to do is creating an account on any of the good RPC providers. We in our case use QuickNote, but some others are totally fine too. So now I've created an RPC node on uh, Solana mainnet, and this one we will use later to upload our assets. In our case with 100 assets, that's not that important, but uh, when you have uh, larger uh, drops or larger collections and you want to upload, the Solana mainnet RPC point is not the best one, so I would clearly recommend to use a custom RPC. The next thing we have to do um, is to throw away our before assets. So for the moment these are completely irrelevant because we have the wrong seller wallet and we want to make sure that everything is ready for our main drop. So what we are doing is going back to our trades configuration and have a look if everything is working for our public mint. So the name is totally fine, symbol is totally fine too. For creator, we will use our Stractor's public key, our Stractor's wallet and we have to put this here that the royalties in the end also go to our Stractor's wallet. Then as before DNP and pre made customs are not used, collection is fine too, Stractor's pixel and Stractor's as family, our breakdown is fine, order is fine, width and height is fine too. So we can now save this and now start typing our generate command. So we will, as usual, start with the TS node uh, candy machine v2 part and, and then we will type as before um, generate ah, 
not true create generative of underscore generative art then we need the dash c and traits configuration dot json then we need the dash n for 100 and the ta true so that we don't have the dot png in our attribute names when we now hit enter this will take some seconds obviously but in a few seconds we should be done now that we have generated our assets let's have a look what we got here so on the first view this looks like a very good mixture so let's check one json file and in here everything looks fine too 0.png we have our collector's wallet and the attributes without a .png so i would say our assets are ready to go so to make this 100 percent sure as before we will again use our verify score assets command on our assets folder to check if everything is okay if there are any like metaplex issues with our collection so let's wait a second and as we can see here this will do it properly looks like there are no errors on the whole collection pretty decent very nice okay perfect now our assets are ready to go they are generated they are verified so let's continue in the process so the next step is to prepare our config.json so i already have started with it but let's go through it point for point so the first thing is price we will remain at 0.1 sol second one is number and this is raised from 5 to 100 then we have gatekeeper which is civic pass and stay civic pass and our sol treasury account where i already have pasted our stractor's public key go live date is okay for us when it's in the past because we want yeah, to start directly with a public mint we, we won't have any kind of whitelist on pre before so that's totally fine and as i just found out today um our weave soil currently is not working very well so um, yeah when you are under i think or uh, i read 10 megabyte with your storage currently they uh, like metaplex or the the guys in the metaplex server are saying it's totally okay to use our weave so Let's go with this. Then our config file is ready, our config file is saved. And I would say let's continue with uh, generating our, our upload command. So the first thing we always need is not our RPC URL, it is our TS node candy machine v2 CLI. And then we can start with upload and the dash dash help command attribute so that we can first get a small overview what we are maybe yeah missing or maybe if we have some additional things on mainnet so obviously we have some additional things on mainnet and that's for example dash dash dot env which was default set to devnet and now we are on mainnet beta and then we have dash k i think that's already known so uh, we will put our stractors key in there and then we have dash c i would like to give it a special name stractors pixel sounds good for me then we will add dash cp for configuration path which is config.json and then the only thing that is missing is dash dash rpc url which is obviously our quick node so 
let's paste this here in the end oh in the end we will put our assets so the folder where our assets are and now we can hit enter and let's see what's happening and now this looks pretty fine for the moment so it's processing our assets hero 50 and 51 um i think i can uh, i will place a cut here as so. you can see now everything uh, has worked perfectly so our upload is uh, set to successful true which is a little bit surprising for me um but after i switched to our weave, it was uh, working perfectly our weave as well was not working for me but i guess uh, we have to keep or we have to stay up to date because uh, this could change like from day to day so what we will do now is uh, checking our cache file and see if everything is fine in there and everything looks good just to make sure that we are not messing something up and as i can see here on chain is true because we haven't verified yet verify set to false which is okay too but um yeah then i would say let's verify now it's a little bit long comment but yeah it is what it is um so let's replace upload with a uh, verify and uh, not not assets upload and uh, dash dash help as usual let's see if there are any attributes we don't have in mind now so double check everything and then if any machine we do see that it's loading up perfect so uh, let's start as usual the first thing we got is dot env uh, dash dash env um, uh, there we put main eta inside then we have dash k for key pair where we are not putting our seller key pair instead our strictest key pair then we have dash cache name which i named strictest pixel then we have dash rpc url where we'll put the quick note url again let's copy that real quick great um perfect and that's basically it so we can hit enter and let's see what this command is doing normally everything everything should be fine and it looks good and ready to deploy so we have one more thing we can check and that's let's verify uh, verify price so yeah, let's do this command too maybe instead of just doing dash dash help because the command is uh, yeah formatted nearly the same as verify upload let's just yeah, change verify upload to verify price price and then put the uh, dash dash p at the end 0 0.1 is our price the price it should be i'm pretty sure it will be correct but let's see good to go looks pretty decent so what we can do now is starting to edit our dot n file to get online or our mainnet mid site therefore i'm uh, copying the candy machine id and then move to uh, strictest pixel ui dot env and now pasting the candy machine in there for the runner network you will obviously um, yeah, choose mainnet mainnet beta and then for react apps on rpc host we will not take the normal Zolana mainnet RPC we will take our own quick note RPC exactly and place it here and now we are good to go so we normally could start going into Versal I would say let's let's start with little commits um okay, let's type uh, I'll first go into the Stractor Speaks UI and then type a git at dot usual and then let's do the commits and get commits dash m and then let's name it edited.env for me 
drain it. Nice. But before like pushing it to our website, let's maybe do a little yarn start and yeah, let's test it. As you know, this takes a few seconds, so I will I will place a cut here and see you then. So now the yarn start is finished. So let's test if when we connect our wallets, everything looks expected. Connecting total minted zero of one hundred minted five, and everything looks fine. So I would say let's deploy to our versus site and then do a test mint in versus. Therefore, we will stop this from here and then we will type a push. So now. should be deploying so as you know this can take a few seconds too so I will cut this here as we can see now our um, our mid side our mainnet side is live so we don't have any remaining deployment and we can see here now our mid side um, I already have connected my bio wallet and uh, transferred uh, 0.15 sold to it as you can see here so now let's try to mint on civic pass um so we need to click trucks here there are some trucks truck two okay civic pass now is i'm a human that's great so let's continue and then when phantom water is loaded let's prove this transaction Perfect. Let's approve it. Let's say it's verifying. And I guess ah, this looks good. Now we can mint. So let's see what the estimated price says. When Phantom Wallet is ready to go on, and we see 0 0.11197. So perfect. Then let's approve the transaction. And Looks good. Let's see if we now have minted the first Stractor's Pixel. So let's switch to collectibles and let's give Phantom the time he needs. Then we see Stractor's Pixel here and we have our first Stractor's Pixel. We have the Masked Mouth. Normal eyes, Stractor's craft in the background. Usually, as usual, the David. We have the hat, the the crown, the king. Pretty nice. And then we have a Rosler White and a basketball team. Pretty nice, pretty nice Stractor. And yeah, so it's working perfectly. Okay, guys, this is the last part of the video. It's 2 a.m. in the morning now. And once then and I are completely exhausted. <laughs> the last two days I think we had absolutely no sleep. Uh, like maybe like two or three hours a day. Yeah, because we wanted to drop this video so bad. Um, we said that we will release it until the end of the week, Sunday. And there are people now so are waiting for this video about two weeks now. And therefore, we tried to give our best, but yeah, uh, I think the little to delay is even not a big problem. Yeah. yeah. What can we tell you now? One stone. What is your opinion? How hard was it? <laughs> in the end, in the end, now we have one collection. We have shown every steps on definite reveal drops and all this kind of stuff. And in the end, we have a pretty decent project, Stractor's Pixel, on our domain now. And we have one end, one hour, and I think. Nearly 40 minutes video material or something like that. I think maybe so, more, but uh, we will see after I've cut everything. Um, yeah. yeah. What is our plan for the future? Our plan is maybe to wait until the drop um, goes sold out. 
um, we will try to do some marketing, of course, we will um, try to promote it on Metaplex, maybe they help us too. Mm, what I can tell you is that we would love uh, to see the project going sold out, um, as we would like to do more videos on this topic, as um, for example, we would like to list it on Magic Eden. And of course we need to close the candy machine and sign them before. Maybe we will film that too uh, or document it in our Discord server. Uh, join our Discord server, that's one of the <laughs> most important points. <laughs> uh, what I can tell you is um, a, a benefit for you and also for us too. Um, the next plan is probably that we also want to do an airdrop for every and um, Spectre's pixel holder, but uh, yeah, you will get the news information in that case in our server again. Yeah, oh, and uh, once so, what was with the very tale? Uh, yeah, I just, I just uh, had a mind, so I, I think there are many, many topics we can handle with uh, Stractor's Pixel in the future. So we will see where it's all leading. The first necessary step is that it's sold out, obviously. But uh, when we have achieved this, there are many opportunities for lots of different videos. One another topic additional to what, what Amor mentioned are rarity tables, for example. That's, I think, mm -hmm. also very interesting for, for many, many others of you. So, yeah, in the end, I would say, I think we have handled lots of many different problems all of you uh, had or might, some of you had. Um, but if you have any questions left or something, then join our Discord, um, yeah, talk to our team or to us, ask the questions uh, you are left with. And so I would like to thank you for watching, for, for the few uh, who are left here at the end, and see you guys from my side. Hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I have one point to say, thanks for all the love you gave us in the server. I think we have made over 400 or 500 members in the last couple of weeks and therefore I would love to say a big, big, big thank you. And um, I don't know if, we, if they will heard uh, this part of the video, but a uh, little shout out goes to Latspe, Rushi, uh, all our um, candy experts like August, Spenny, Evolex. Thank you all for the help in our server, even, uh, I mean, especially in the time when we filmed this video, as we had nearly no time for the server and the people, but we tried to even answer the, the, or to all of you, but um, yeah, a big, big shout out goes out to you, and sorry if I missed uh, someone's name, <laughs> maybe in the next video, and yeah, see ya, that was my last two cents. One last point from my side. Please, <laughs> please, 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 please don't hate my English too much. Thanks. Bye. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh.